Father, we thank you, Lord God, for allowing us to be here this evening. We thank you for another Bible study on this for this series, um, Unity is How We Love, part three. We thank you, Lord God, for what you're doing in this um, department. Um, we just pray, Father, that it, this evening, Lord God, that you have your way with the Bible class. We pray, Lord God, that you bless the speaker, give the speaker the words that is needed for everyone who is here and everyone who is going to hear this so they can receive. Open up the hearts of those who are listening to this, um, no matter now or later on, so that they are ready for you. We give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All, all to you, Jolly. All right. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Um, we're just going to talk tonight uh, very, very briefly. Um, oh, God, just I'm going to stay on the topic of unity is how we love. But I want to take it a little bit deeper into the love tonight. Um, since I, and I'm just talking on my heart and really from my heart, we have already been positioning ourselves for, for, for the poor. We have already been positioning ourselves just to die out continuing ourselves diet, dying daily um, and allowing God to do whatever he wants to do in us, for us and through us. Um, so tonight, it's a, it's a real good topic. I want to take it because um, from the standpoint of image, the word unity sits right above the baptismal pool. I don't know if pastor did that for a reason, but there is clearly something that's in unity that has to be rewashed that has to be relived that has to be relearned and definitely have to be reformed and enough to push um and i just want to talk about the death the death a great man but also you and we have a mission to Sorry, so we're starting to lose you, man. Keep pouring back, and we have a mission. Let me know if I should plug up to my phone because I'm gonna try to make this quick. Can you hear me clear? We have no power, so let me know. I can. So I'm working. I'm, no, I'm so now, now. Our rain is off. Our rain got our power off, so I, I'm working off of the Wi-Fi off my phone and I'm also using my phone for the word so let me know can you hear me clear now yes or no yes we can hear you I can hear you clear now all right I may have to switch it over let me know if I have to switch over at any given time so the topic on tonight is pouring the anointment oil let me know can you hear me clear with a yes or no? yes sir yes sir cool beans cool beans all right so uh, if you're taking up a topic with me, um, we're going to be starting off and I'm going to just take you over a series of the word, just letting you be encouraged tonight of how to truly unify yourself through Christ. But while we're only loving on Jesus Christ, because he's the reason why we're living. Right. So come with me to Matthews and we're going to go into 26. And then let me know if you guys can't hear me throughout this or anything, and I'll back it up. Um, now we're now when Jesus was in Bethlehem in the house of Samaria, the leper, there came an, upon him a woman having the alabaster box. It is very precious anointment. So this alabaster box is a very precious anointment, and it poured it on and poured it on his head. And he sat at meat. And when his disciples saw it, they were in indignation, indignation, saying, to what purpose is it this waste? So they thought it was an indignation of waste. This is for this, for this anointment might have been sold for much more and given to the poor. So they wanted this anointment that she poured on to Jesus to be sold 
that's one thing. Um, as we keep reading and giving to the poor, when Jesus stood unto them, he said unto them, why trouble ye this woman? For she have wrought a good work upon me, for ye have the poor always for you. So the poor will always be here, but me, ye have not always. So right then and there, he's letting them know why he's standing with them in unity. The poor will always be with you, but I will not be with you always. For in that she have poured the anointing, she have poured the anointment on my body. She did not, she did it for my burial. Verily I say unto you, who's, Whosoever this gospel shall be preached in the whole world, there shall also, they shall also this, that this woman have done, be told in the memory of his, of her. So in the whole story right here, she wants you to be known that there is definitely a, Jesus wants us to know that there is a memory of him that is being done. And out of this alabaster box, there was something that was poured on him that the people, the people wanted him to be sold or just wanted the oil to be sold for a lot more. Let's just say that. Why trouble ye this woman, Jesus said in a question mark, for she had wrought a good work upon me. For ye have... The poor will always be with you, but me, ye have not always. For in that she had poured this anointing on my body, she did it for my burial. So he had letting you know right there, something has to die. So in the midst of the people, something's still being shown that something has to die while Jesus is still living. So to them, it's really... It's an oxymoron. How are you going to tell me to do something, but you're really here still? So at the end of the day, can you still hear me, Aaron? Yes or no? Just let me know. Okay, cool. For in that which she poured his anointing on the body, she did this in the burial. Verily I say unto you, whosoever this gospel shall be preached in the whole world, there shall also this, that this woman hath done, be told before a, before told for a memorial of her. So God wants you to just remember what she done. It's the woman with the alabaster box. So that was, and as we keep reading, you guys can keep reading, but I'm gonna take you through a series of Jesus talking about his burial. And I wanna talk about our burials that we always have to get rid of. Um, and, in, and like I said, when I started the word unity, which is love, she did it because she loved Jesus enough to pour something on his head that she was foreshadowed and saying, seeing that nobody else seen. So sometimes even to us and even, and I'm gonna say us to the community, that's what they were. They were a village. Um, they were a village that was seeing this act be done to Jesus. But in the same given time, Jesus had to say that it had to be done because of the simple fact that the woman was being shown in a remembrance. And I just want to take you over to uh, another portion. And this is where I'm going to take my subtitle up from. Give me one second. We're going to go over to James. So remember, that's what she, she poured the oil onto the, so now you got the oil and we're going to deal with two things. I'm dealing with the anointing oil because you have to be poured out of something. If you, if you have to get into this water and you have to die, we're talking about the love of Jesus. You're dying out for Christ. If we're dying out for our, the love of Jesus Christ, there's no point not to come back and be made whole. Now I want to teach you how to be made whole. Getting rid of some of the stubbornness and the willing and the unwillingness to receive yourself anymore, to take on the whole and body of Jesus Christ. That's what we're talking about tonight and taking on the whole body of Jesus Christ because Jesus is love. And it would, and I'm going, to, I'm going somewhere with this guys because um, Jesus is love and not only is Jesus love, he had to talk about 
he had a, he's pre-foreshadowing his uh, where he got his anointing oil from the spiritual side while he's about to be crucified and sent to the cross. So this is it's taken up from Matthew. That's where this is. But if we flip over with me and we're going to go to Romans 8 and it's all going to tie together because we're talking about Jesus' anointing and his unconditional love is not being based off of any reason at all. Um, and I talked about the, our stubbornness and our willingness to do something. I don't know if it was hard for her to be shunned upon by the disciples that was walking with Jesus saying that she should have not poured this anointing oil because it could have been sold in the, or it could have been at a, bought at a higher price. But Jesus said, wait, she poured this anointing oil on the highest price. Little do y'all know, the poor will always be here, but I won't. He's showing them that through this love and through this unconditional love that I'm about to show you, I will always be here. So you, through this oil, and I want you guys to remember the oil that she poured on Jesus, because now, if, I mean, if you keep on reading through that story, um, it allows you to see where Jesus is actually about to be crucified and taken to the cross. But I want to let you, I want to bring you into a portion after that, because we, we're talking about the love of Christ. But why did Jesus even love us? Because God crucified his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, just so that he can pay the penalties for our sins by dying on the cross, even before the sacrifice, when he, when all in all, the sacrifice was for our sins. And that's where we're going to pick up in Romans 5 and 8. And now, as we get there, I'm here. I want to share with you guys, because it's really tying together on what the woman with the alabaster box did right before Jesus went into crucifixion. Now that Jesus went to the cross and he came through. Now we're at Romans 5 and 8. And I'm going to bring this all together for you guys. And we're going to talk about how unity is love through the power of Jesus Christ. And unity is love through the power of Jesus Christ. Because Jesus had to just speak on something powerful just in Matthew, letting them know that, hey, she didn't do anything wrong. She poured the anointing oil upon not only my body, but it was the whole entire body. So when we talk about ourselves and being a part of a unity and being part of a body, it's our togetherness, guys. So when we talk about our fellowship side and our, or, and our spiritual side, we're always going to die out of this fleshly side so that our spiritual side can live. And even right then and there, it had to be shown because the poor will live amongst us. But if we go over to five, Romans five, for, for if we had been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. So now we, not only are we in likeness of his dying, we also know that we're in likeness of his rising. That's already how you rise up. Talking about I'm taking it back to the unity over the baptismal pool. When we get baptized in Jesus' name, we are dying out of our name. And I'm going to put my name there. I'm dying out of jolly. And I'm raising back up as Jesus Christ. Not, not putting him in like, oh, I am Jesus or I am God, but just having him in my mind that's saying, I I am the whole image of Jesus. And now I am the whole image of God. And because of that, I'm a part of his kingdom body. So all of us together are part of the kingdom body. And because of that, we are unified. We are unified through his resurrection, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him and that the body of sin might be destroyed. So we're destroying sin, literally, even in, um, and I'm, I'm, I'm always going to speak back and forth because I'm getting rid of all the stubbornness and the unwillingness to receive Jesus Christ through the King. And that's what we're talking about. The, in, the actual being of J Jesus Christ being shown today through love. And why is he in you? And why is he living in me? Because we're all living. 
we all have the Holy Ghost. We definitely all been baptized in Jesus name, but now how can we embody the whole entire unity of love? Let's figure what Jesus says. He, he and this henceforth, we shall not serve sin. So he says it right there. We shouldn't serve sin forth. He that is dead and freed from sin, now we be dead in Christ. We believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that the Christ being risen from the dead dieth no more. So he's not dying no more. So I'm just telling you, and I want to encourage you right there, that Jesus, now that we're me and you are living with Jesus, we're, we're here to live. We're not here to die. We don't have death. That's why when we say we're here to live, to live again, we're living this life just to live again with the king. And I'm going to encourage each and every last one of us. We're living to live with a king. No matter, I know the sin sometimes overpowers us. And I'm not going to lie from the standpoint of the world, sin looks sexy, but it is nothing sexy. You are strictly about to die. And I want to encourage you that you're not dying. Okay. You're not dying. You're not going to give yourself over to death. You're not going to die in sin. You're not going to die trying to fight this good fight and then just get swallowed up by the enemy. Why? Because the word is so truth and it gives life. And just like the baptismal pool, we are all have died out and now we're living, but we're living with the love of Jesus Christ. There is a, this feed from sin. Now, if we be dead in Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ being raised from the dead, dieth no more. Death has no more domination over him. For he that is dead, he, for in that he died, he died unto sin once. He only died once. So we don't have to keep saying, oh God, save me or deliver me. I want to help us like as we walk, because you don't have to say that. Why? You just say, Lord, deliver me. And I thank you for walking. Now you have the empower to keep on living. All right. Keep on living. You don't have to wait till a Sunday or next Sunday. You can keep living right now today. You can be whatever you're going through, no matter what we're going through in our minds, no matter what we're going through, uh, even in school or as we go through the summer break, if we can keep living, keep on living, but we're living for who? The Christ, the King. Let's talk. Now, the Christ being risen from the dead, for in now that he's living, he's he, uh, now that he's been risen from the dead, for in that the dead he died unto sin once, that in that he lived, he lived unto God. Likeliness, root. Reckon, un, reckon you also yourself to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So you could be reconciled you also yourself to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And that's literally, so you are alive through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And to just let you know about how Jesus is coming. Jesus overtakes us, and I'm going to talk to us as a noun church. This was back then, and I just wanted to walk you guys through a series of events of how you've seen the anointing oil being shown through Jesus Christ, where he had to speak about it. Now he's talking about what had to die, and it all really started from this anointing oil, that he said that it was okay where the people really wanted to sell it for more or sell it to the, even the poor. There's, he didn't want you to sell. He doesn't want you to sell our bodies. Our bodies are living vessels of the Holy Ghost. Our bodies are living creatures of Jesus Christ. We're valuable unto Christ. So with that being said, the love comes right now. After, after Jesus is already gone and let us know that I have, it's okay, guys. I have went to the cross for you. I am now re resurrected. And because of that, how do you now love on a person that's not here? With unconditional love, you can speak to him. You can speak to him ever so clearly. 
you can speak to him ever through just saying, God, I want you now more than ever. Lord, I just thank you just for waking me up this morning. He's not worried about religion or he's not worried about faith. He's not worried about what's going on on social media. Jesus doesn't care about none of that. He really just wants us to truly live in unity, in unity with the kingdom, aligning yourself up right and how to align yourself up right. Taking the anointing oil and just applying it to your life. Not in just physical form, but actually in like inner body form. We were talking, I was talking about at the beginning still, and it's all time, you being baptized in Jesus' name. Now we have the name of Jesus. That's what we're lifting up. Jesus, Jesus Christ is the only way. Not, he's not the way, he's the only way. The only way that you can really get your mind out of captivity, the only way that you can really breathe, the only way that you can really live, the He's really, he's there to not only keep you calm, but he can, he's there to answer every single call. And that's what Jesus is for. So not, we're talking about why we're living in unity through Jesus Christ. It's the love. It's the love that you have for yourself. If you die, if you died out your name, I don't care, put your name there. You, you, Joshua died out. And now I'm living because I have, when I raise up, I'm embodying the whole, the whole Jesus Christ. So why not? Why not live for a kingdom? That is the unity. To unify yourself with the whole body of Jesus Christ so that we can be built for a king and a kingdom. We, he's, he's building his kingdom because he's destroying all sin. I don't care how we look at it. Sin is being destroyed. And as we know with fire, <laughs> we, we already know he came with the water. But before he comes back, we'll continue to purify yourselves. Evangelist Michelle on the night of the outpour said, I have to ask God for the Holy Ghost every day. So uh, while you're asking God for the Holy Ghost, continue to ask him, while we're dying out, to purify you, to sustain you, to allow you to walk through the fire when he comes back with this great big volcano, however he's coming, he's it's gonna just like, and all the fire be coming down like rain. We're already baptized in his name. He unified us. So when we're thinking about just the weight of our sin or just the weight of our wrongdoing, I want to bring you. I want to draw you guys' attention real quick to something. Sin does not always have to look like drugs. Sin does not always have to look like money. Sin doesn't always have to look like what whatever social media is giving you right now. Jesus was in a environment of sin, and that's what caused him to be crucified. If we think about it, if we kept reading on into Matthew. Because the disciples were asked to pray, right? Just for one hour. They start falling asleep. Were they sinning? No, not really. I can't say. But in a way, to one, they were sinning. God asked them to do something and they did not do it. That's disobedient. So even when I think about God, when you ask me to go somewhere or you ask me to do something for an assignment, am I disobeying you because I'm not? Think about that as you do, as we walk through this journey, because God wants to let you know, I, he loves you with unconditional love. So no matter what you do, no matter what it looks like, no matter what it may seem like to you in your head, you're, I love you unconditionally. So what did he do? He gave them another opportunity. The next day he said, can you pray with me for one hour? And again, as he goes into prayer, they still go to sleep. But if they could all re remember when he said, the woman that poured the alabaster box oil, when she poured the anointing oil on me, it was preparing me for my burial anyway. So 
they just didn't know what was to come. So even though they did not have the time or did not have the ability, I wanna tell you, Jesus still had a plan. He still had a purpose. He still had a love for them that still had to be fulfilled. He did not want it, but he still loved them to take upon the cross because of their sin. Again, is it drinking? Is it smoking? No. But is it, is it disobedient? Yes. And that's why God had to go to the cross. And so when, but not only is he had, did he have to go to the cross because he died, just as we have to live, he is risen. He's risen. So if for, he risen for their stubbornness, for their disobedience, for their ways of lack of understanding, because they wanted to sell the greatest anointing oil that was being used for a setup, for a miracle to just be sold at a higher price, but they already sold it to the best price for free she, at no cost. Because at no cost did the woman with the alabaster box pour the oil onto Jesus Christ. And he said that was, in this you will remember her because you'll remember me and because I love her. So just because of that, I want to tell you guys, with unconditional love, they did not know what Jesus was doing. They did not know what and sometimes we walk through life, guys, and we don't know what Jesus is doing. We don't know how he's setting us up or how he's orchestrating our life. But with unconditional love, he has brought us to a clear understanding that we are kingdom builders. We're kingdom, we're kingdom preneurs. We're kingdom uh, mindset because he's living in us. We're, we're Jesus kids, and we should not be ashamed of that. Why? Because when I got baptized, I died out of Josh Jolly. My sin died out. And now that I'm raising up again in this new life, I want to lift up the kingdom. I want to lift up Jesus. Because not only did he die for this sin, and again, it's not, it's not those type of sins, but Lord, it's when you ask me to just take five minutes out at 3 a.m. when I know I want to sleep to maybe four but you're asking me to get up at three. So I, unify, unifying myself to saying, I'm switching that. I'm switching that. Mm -hmm. Unifying my mind enough, because I, I talked about in the first series, um, when we was coming talking about worship is how we live, the inward parts of ourselves. And now that I'm on the series of unifying ourselves for God, I'm talking about the why we want to unify ourselves for God. because he is dealing with a cross, which is a burial. And just like the unified word sitting at the, above the baptismal, we're at a crossroad of decision where we have to die out of ourselves. And as we live, and we're living to love, we're living to love on a Christ that is living in us, that says, I love you through your shame. I love you through your disobedience and your un willingness to serve me for one hour or think that the alabaster box which is the anointing oil that pours onto me that remind gives people the memory that they had the anointing oil that follows them the anointing is and that's what and that's what is still living it's the anointing it's the anointing that God that really not only destroys jokes, but it's the anointing that Jesus is allowing us to really, really, really move and have our being. The, based off of Ephesians 2 and 4, being rich in mercy is having the greatest love. Being rich in mercy of the greatest love, which, which is he, that loved us, even when he was died and transgressions made. And that's Jesus. Jesus just has to remind us that he is, he died for our transgression. He died for our iniquity. And he definitely has the loving valuable and the vitam that it takes for us to just continue to live through unity. I had looked up love 
in so many different avenues. And one thing that stuck out to me the most was the love that Jesus Christ has for you covers the multitude of sin. And it stuck out to me because at the decision-making time, when it's time for us to die, everybody that's in this world is scared of death. But over here in the Christian world, I want to let you know, and I want you to be, I want you to just be encouraged tonight, that it is, you are willing, you must be willing to die out of yourself so that you can unify yourself through love and through the love of Jesus Christ. You have to be willing to die out of yourself, to unify yourself through the love of Jesus Christ. The love over love over valuable expenses. That's what I looked up. When I, when I seen love, and I broke down my own definition, love, the love over valuable expenses. I don't care if, if your car is expensive, if your house is expensive. And Jesus is more loving than all of that. And that's what he wanted us to understand or the people in Samira that day because, and Beth, I'm sorry, the people in Bethany, because the woman with the alabaster box, she had the anointing oil. The anointing oil was the greatest gift that could be carried out through our memory of today. And that's why we can continue to remember the love of Jesus Christ. And now that he's not only, he's not only gone to the cross, for the weight of sin. He's living. He's living and he's breathing. He's, he's not only carrying a weight of what a man thinks. He's not carrying a weight of what a woman thinks. He's carrying the weight of a king who's holding a mission of a kingdom. And he's holding a mission of a, a people of God like you and me to just serve a kingdom. That's all. Through what? Through him. He is, he is Jesus. He's all powerful. He's alpha and he's the omega. And that is why we live. We continue to live. We continue to move. We continue to have our being because Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And now that he's living, I want you guys to realize that through these stories of um, that I blended together and I took my topic off of uh, Matthew, and it's the pouring of the anointment. He said, and the word on my body. But if you embark that in my, of uh, this is our body. We are the body of the Holy Ghost. We are the uh, temp we're the temple of the Holy Ghost, and we're the body of Jesus Christ. So as we're embarking on the whole body, He's putting us all into unity by just you asking, God, can I die out? And continuing to die out. And now knowing the fact, because again, unity, you've been washed in the blood of the lamb through Jesus Christ. You have the anointing oil. You have the, you have the power in your own tongue to say, God, I'm living, but I'm living through Jesus Christ. No matter what comes my way, no matter what people may say, no matter if people want to say that it's, <clears throat> I'm doing things that are being bought at a high price, because that anointing oil could have been definitely bought at a high price to me. But Jesus said, no, you're going to do what I asked you to do. And that's exactly what it is. Do, do not look upon yourself as you're never enough. Jesus says that you're more than enough. And I love you with unconditional love. And through that, this unity is yours. It is so yours. I want to take you to one more, uh, one more passage that I have understood in my research. that he's predestined us. 
He's predestined us to adopt his own son through Jesus Christ. And according with his pleasures, you have to trust. You have to trust him. So trust is another thing in unity. So now we had to embody him through the anointing oil, but we also have to embody him through the trust, which is unity. So you have to trust the fact that God is leaving. He's living in you. And not only is he living in you, he's leading you to the path of righteousness. He's leading you to the path of kingdom. He's leading you to a land that's flowing with milk and honey through the unconditional love. He allowed yourself to die out through your stubbornness, getting rid of the unwillingness to just move or just the thoughts of what it should be. Oh, now he's moving you right on over to the unified through Jesus Christ and how you can be unified through Jesus Christ. Pouring the anointing oil on the body. That is something that I want you to remember. Dying out, we already did that. Pouring, we did that. But now how do I have power in my tongue? How do I have power in my tongue to continue to say, Jesus, what must I do to stay in your unified walk? And you have to remember the anointing oil. Your anointing sits more powerful than anybody walking. Your anoint the anointing that you are walking in sits more powerful than anybody that's out here in the world because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world so i want to tell you jesus christ is love through the unity of your life to allow you to just stop think and say god you really are the anointing on my life (laughs) because that's what you are i want you i want you to be encouraged tonight that you have a you're walking with an anointing you're walking with the authority. And when you not only walk into the house of GCT, right? You're not walking into a GCT, a church. You're walking into the kingdom building. You're kingdom builders. Giselle, Naya, Aaron, Levin, you guys are all kingdom builders. Josh, I'm a kingdom builder because we're here to push the kingdom as a servant leader. And through that, we're going to live out this unity through the love of Jesus Christ. And In my closing, because I'm going to take five minutes, but I'm going to give it over to my leadership for the last 10. I want to let us know that in in the story tonight with the woman with the alabaster box, I can only imagine what people did when she poured the oil on Jesus physically in form. Now, we don't get the physical Jesus. And that's why I love to take up this topic and I had to take it up for unity for my first night because we don't get the Jesus in full form. We only get the the thought of who he is and then we get to read on who he is. But the, the thought of actually pouring the anointing oil on Jesus and getting the reaction of the people and seeing the people that they were like, oh no, this is not what you should have been doing. This is not. And then just for Jesus to say, hold on, whoa, guys. This is exactly what she should have been doing because it was setting the stage for my burial. Y'all just didn't know. So uh, definitely before I pass it over, I want to say thank y'all so much for allowing me to share the opportunity of unity, which is love, because unity is love. And as it sits still in that not only a word, over the baptismal pool. Think about it as ourselves continue to anoint, our anointing, it's the anointing that follows because of the burial. That's what, it's not, I didn't want to be stuck on his death. It was the anointing that came from the first start of him just initially saying, this is going to be the start of your next death. And then through this, I'm going to live and I'm going to share with you a greater life that you never have to die again. Never, because he snatched those. So continue to live in with Jesus. Continue to live in God and grow in God. Don't be afraid to take your leaps of faith with Jesus because God would never steer you wrong. 
He's, he's the past, the present, and the future. And if he died for a greater future, which now we can all see, now, now we get to definitely the, oh my God, Jesus is really living moment, but they didn't get that moment back then. Be, don't count it as lost and don't take it for granted that you know who you are in Jesus. And you know who you are because you've been baptized in his name and you carry Jesus Christ. He loves you. He loves you. And through that, he has already unified you. Aaron or Laban, I'm passing it up. Unity is how we love. You know, uh, what Jolly was talking about, um, you know, when we get baptized, we are literally surrendering, you know, ourselves. And um, letting go, it's like, God, I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to let go of what I've been trying to do or what my plans are for my life. Sorry, y'all. My dog is scratching himself with long nails and he's hurting himself. Brady, please stop. Stop. Anyways. <laughs> Anyways. So when we're dying to ourselves and we're coming back up, we're coming back up with a, a harder mindset of I want to now become united with you. You know, what, what, are, what are your plans? I want to be, I want to come in alignment with your plans that you have for me. Uh, you know, I, 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 that this is what I'm, I'm seeking for. This is what I'm desiring. So I understand what you mean, um, Jolly, when you're saying like, it's interesting how unity is above the baptismal pool of the, of the church. Um, God works the way he works. He, he does things in such mysterious ways. And just like, he'll do things that are profound that are right there in your face that you don't know right then and there, you know? Um, but yeah, man, when you, when that's going on and you really, and you really start to feel how it's like, I, it's like when you get baptized, it's like you start to really feel like he's really, he, like he wants me. You know, just, just as I am, he, he wants to, to um, lead me. Like there may be some things you may have been going towards or, or headed towards whatever with your life. Um, but there is a path that he has for me. And it's, 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 another, it's another type of experience when you begin to follow that path, uniting with, with God's plan for your life. Um, you know, when you do that, at, at beginning, it's like, and I'll just share my experience. At the beginning of United, it's like everything is just like, wow, everything is going well. Everything is going. And it is this the more that you continue to follow God, it's like when He's ready to take you to that next step, it's like there is all this craziness that begins to go on. And it's like, at first, we're like, oh, God, I thought you loved me. I thought you. But it's like he begins to continue to show himself to you in that destruction at a deeper, a deeper place, a deeper level. So it's like, are you going to continue to unite with me in my plan for you? Or are you, was all that that you were saying to me that you love me, that you, that you want to be there with me, that, that you need me? was all that for words, was all that basically just words coming out of your mouth that you didn't mean nothing, you know? So like continuing to unite with Jesus in his plan. When you go down, you know, baptism is something that's not supposed to be something that we just did. It is, it is meant to be, it is a very, um, it is something that's symbolic of, I have died to myself now, I am going to live according to the methods, the path that Christ has for me, you know? And, and, and when you get filled with this Holy Spirit, we're now empowered. We're empowered 
to say no to our flesh. We're empowered to say no to um, what died when we went down into the water and came back up. You know, we're empowered for that. So now he has given us, he has loved on us and that love that he has given us also just, it also encourages us. You know, we have the love of God encourages when we're in prayer and stuff of that nature, when we're communing with him on that one-on-one -on -one place, we, we, we are giving of ourself who gives us more of him so that we can continue continuing to be united you know i'm i'm i'm, I'm talking and I'm, I'm correcting at the same time <laughs> so and that's what god does to us he talks yeah. to us but he corrects us all, all at the same time and that and his love and it's still even lovely it may be harsh but it's still lovely yeah. No, you're good. Then I'm just going to add uh, not only the transparency that God gives us now, but it's the it's the true definition of being a, a not even worth yourself. It's just like the be worthless of yourself. Just know that. God has seen it all. He is he's knowing of all. So just continue to just live in me. Continue to embottle me and continue to just go after and go deeper and want to go deeper in God. I, I think that's going to be another just wanting to go deeper because a lot of people do not want to go deeper in God. And you have to have a willingness that, yes, God, I did this. I, I got baptized and I got the Holy Ghost. But now how can, how can I go deeper? And having the willingness, because you at first you had the unwillingness to receive Jesus, and, and you did. Now you, now you're willing. How can you go deeper and receive more? But through through his unit, through his unity of him, Jesus of knowing Jesus, he'll allow you to reveal. He'll just keep revealing himself more and more to you each and every last day. That's really what it is, and and that's just again that's more knowing for who he is through unity he's he's unifying himself to embody you just as we go into our clothes he's unifying us together through himself to wash no, us all away yeah my bad y'all i was no you're good you're you. good you're all the way good. I, I was i was reading ezekiel y'all and i was reading where um ezekiel god was took ezekiel into a, a state of a vision and he watched he saw God sitting on his throne before the temple of God it was here on earth. And he saw his throne. He saw him sitting on it. But he also saw the angels. It was like, it's like this, think of it like, um, it's like it's on this crystal-like platform where his throne was sitting on the platform, right? So this is the throne. It's, it was on this crystal-like platform. And underneath it were angels, but they weren't just underneath it. They were positioned at particular corners. It was a cherub and, a, and a, an angel that was like a wheel and a wheel in itself. One on each corner, um, two of them. When they moved, they moved in unison there was never any one of them that 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 um moved in a, in a weird direction none of them was like shaking or anything like that um the cherub they have four faces they have a face of an ox a face of a human a face of an eagle and a face of a man when they move in any direction they don't turn they just move in that direction because every direction they go in they can see um, and they have eyes all over their bodies. And so does the, the angels that were like wheels. So the point I'm bringing that up is when they moved, when God was on them, when, when God was sitting on the throne over the, that base, that crystal-like glass-looking base, if you will, um, they moved in unison. Whatever he was doing, they, it's like they just knew what he wanted to do next, and they just obeyed. 
I brought that up to say this. I wonder, imagine somebody who comes in complete unity with the will of God on their life. Um, imagine what it would be, how, how God would operate through that person if they would just submit fully to him. I know that we have flesh and stuff of that nature, but someone who is, uh, you know, the flesh and, and, and like, you know, the part that's in us that is against God. So we're going to always have some resistance, but imagine the life of somebody who has fully submitted themselves to God to where they are really uniting with the plan of God over their life. You know, the, the only, the, not, not the only, but an example that I can talk about and with confidence, y'all, is our very first first lady and pastor. Um, they're not the only ones in life that is living a life that's submitted unto God. A lot of us are. But when you look at how effective they have been this past 10 years, like you guys don't really realize, well, some of you may not realize how much they have been through. They, they have been through a lot of stuff. And God has has literally been with them through it all. There's times where they felt like giving up and they encouraged one another. Think of the unity, how they were you, together, united, following the plan of God. But even times when one of them started the trip, the other one had their back. So, so that, that one had their back started to encourage them. They began one again doing their thing. One of them started to mess up. The other one started to encourage them. How they continued on. But as a group, as a unit, not a group, but a unit, <clears throat> literally uniting. And now that we have, because they've united, we have vision. People are, are doing things that they didn't know they'll be able to do. Um, even right now, y'all, Laven, Jolly, we have teachers on the staff that are not even, not even um, the, with the title of minister that are right now teaching and able to pass down understanding because someone has decided to unite with the plan of God. So you know, when you think about baptism, you're dying to yourself and you're coming back up to receive you know, God's plan. Like it's, it may, it's not immediate because the thing is, this is something you have to really work out in prayer. God begins to reveal more to you but the more that you begin to spend time with them, the more that you become united with his plan. I don't like this. This doesn't feel good. But you said this was going to happen. You said to do this. I'm going to follow that because I remember the last time I followed you, everything went all right. Some things were uncomfortable, but everything on, on the scheme of things became out just the way that you said it would be. So the, the love behind it, y'all. I want you to think about that. What, what part in my life have I not surrendered or came into full unity of God's plan over? I want you to think about that because, because we're talking about this doesn't mean that y'all are not doing it. It, does, it doesn't mean that. It just, it's just something to think about. Like what part of my life, is there, is there any part of my life that I have not fully surrendered to the plan of God? Because Maybe you may surrender in one area, but another area. So an example would be like an adult. So we're about to close because it's eight o'clock, about to be eight o'clock. But think of it like this. It's an adult may surrender to God when it comes to how they act, but they don't surrender their finances. That may not even be tithing, right? It just may be how they operate. Or they may surrender with their finances, but they may not surrender their friend group that is keeping them from them. You know what I'm saying? So like, what, is there an area that you may feel like I have not fully surrendered myself to him in? So you can become united. Worship brings you to a unity so that you can serve. You know, it's, it's like, it's literally uh, uh, an equation, if you will, is the worship brings you into that unity. It's in unity with others, unity to his will, unity into his way. You see what I'm saying? So that you can serve later on or whatever it may be.
So I want you to think about that. Just something for you to think about. Is there an area in my life that I am not unified with God in? Am, am I not surrendering to God in? Is there anything you want to say, Levin, before we close out, sir? Nope. Okay. There's one thing that um, just came up in my messages. Uh, is God going to tell everyone? Is God going to tell everyone that to enter into the gates of heaven? <laughs> and that's the message for tonight. Um, God is giving us the message through all his whole entire lifestyle while he was actually living and now through his death and through us receiving him by living again, he's wanting to tell everybody to enter into the gates. However, everybody is not receiving. And that was, uh, the question was coming from Giselle. Is God going to tell everybody to enter into the gates of heaven? And that's what she said. And I wanted to just answer that before we did close out. Oh, I didn't see that. Yeah, but yeah, Giselle, not, unfortunately, not everybody, because not everybody is, 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 is trying to live a life submitted like they should be, you know? And um, last thing, Giselle, just real quick for you. If you have two little brothers, if your mom tells one of them, if your mom tells one of them, hey, do not put your hands in the cookie jar before dinner, but the other one does not know. Okay, let's say Chauncey, she told Chauncey, don't put your hands in the cookie jar before dinner, but, your other brother does not know, okay? Mm. Your other brother goes and gets some cookies out of the cookie jar before dinner and your right. mom finds out, okay? She may not be upset with your younger brother, but if Chauncey puts his hands in that cookie jar after she told him not to before dinner and it gets caught, Chauncey's gonna get in trouble. So I want you to think about it when it comes to God, when, when someone dies, it is God that chooses you of that person makes it or not okay if, if we're someone who follows after him we will be someone who he says enter into these gates but if we have he's been telling us follow me follow me listen to me but we've lived a life where we have not done that when we get to that gate i don't know if that particular person will make it or not if they do it is because of god's grace and mercy but biblically no so Unfortunately, not, and I'm trying to be honest with you, not everybody's going to make it. But if you're striving for God, don't feel like God is going to be like, well, I, I didn't fast last week. So, no, nah, that's, that's not how God operates. That's not how he operates. But y'all, it's 803, and I don't want to keep us <laughs> up here because we can continue all night. But I appreciate you, Jolly. Thank you for the class on this evening. Um, y'all, this Sunday, we have Youth Day. For graduation, we're going to be celebrating Naya. We're going to be celebrating all the other graduates. Naya, Naya we celebrate you even right now. I'm Congratulations. Absolutely. We Congratulate you. Right you. Now. you are graduating and moving on. We are excited for you. I'm excited to see you do your thing, girl. Um, Father, we thank you for allowing us to be on this. <laughs> she says she feels so, you know, you're not old. We thank you, Lord, for allowing us to have this Bible study. We pray, Father, that something was said to bless um, the hearers. We honor you this evening. We pray, Father, that you be glorified and magnified. Bless um, Minister Jolly as he continues to, to deepen his relationship with you. And as he brings forth the word, Lord God, um, that even gets better and better um, as the days go by. We thank you for his labor of love. We thank you, Lord God, for the message. And we just pray, Lord, that you have your way. In Jesus' name that we pray, amen. Thank you, Jolly. Appreciate you, man. Good job, Jolly. Good job. Love you, too. I'll see you all Have Sunday. a great night. Bye. Bye-bye. Have a good one. See ya. Congrats, Maya. <laughs>